Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by the garden today. We're going to do a little video on growing and taking care of coleus plus trimming it up. So we've been growing this coleus for a few months now and it's starting to get really long and woodsy because the flowers are starting to sprout. You can see how many flowers are on it. Now we don't want to cut them all because we definitely want to encourage bees to still stick around the garden and if we get rid of them all, <clears throat> then the bees and stuff won't come around and we get really big bumblebees as well as honeybees and Florida bees all kinds of different bees there's so many that pollinate your garden and are good for the garden so we're going to get in here and just show you how we trim a little bit you want to get the ones that are really long so you can see in the middle here on the top we have really long branches and they're getting really woodsy they're starting to get too too long so you want to cut down to a node where you see two leaves growing out of the side of the armpits of the branch and that's where you want to cut just above this way what happens is these two will grow into two new big branches and become two new plants on top and provide more flowers. So we're going to go ahead and cut as much as we can. You can see this is the flower stalk. They usually go into threes once you leave them to get big. Then you want to go down a node and go down another node. And you can see those two little branches sticking out and that's where you want to cut. You can either cut this far up or you can go even lower. You can cut it a lot lower too keep it nice and short because that's the way we want it we want to keep it nice and short and bushy instead of long and woodsy because coleus tends to get really long and woodsy and then it just gets out of control and then it gets really just dull in here there's no foliage that ends up coming in the the middle it just gets long and mostly stems no leaves so this is a way to keep it nice and bushed down we're just gonna get in here and cut the long ones that have been on here a long time like that and then the tinier ones we're going to leave on for a little while this way they can grow and get big now you can definitely pollinate i mean these are already pollinated by the bees so you want to leave them on there until they look a little bit dead this is pretty fresh you can see all the beautiful purple flowers on there purple and white ones with the green foliage it looks good but if you leave it on there when they get long and big like this and start drying out you can put them in a little plastic baggie let them dry out all the way on the counter first and then put them in a little baggie, leave it open for them to dry until they're nice and brittle. And what you can do is take each flower part off so you can take them off. Oop, there's a bee. He wants the coleus, so let's give it to him. <laughs> We're not going to disturb these little guys. You just got to stay calm around the bees, give them what they want. You know, this is really tough to trim during the day. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what to do. I only feed it maybe once a week to once every two weeks with an all-purpose fertilizer from Dynagro. It's a Dynagro grow system, 795. And we're gonna do this to a couple of them, but we're gonna leave a lot of flowers on there as well until the foliage that we cut produces flowers, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut the rest that are ready to, to be cut. You can see we don't wanna cut much because we have a nice bumblebee right there. They're so pretty and they're so good for the garden, you guys, especially when we're growing so much produce next to them. You can see the little guy right there. <laughs> He's on the branch, so cute. So that's the way you grow coleus. Just keep it nice and hydrated. You can see when we get temperatures above 90 here, this is a really good summer plant to grow. Even in temperatures above 90, we are struggling with some fungus because we're really congested up in here. So I'm gonna get in here and trim a lot of this up like I've been doing. Trim the foliage down a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of all the flowers on here, trim it down. This way we get nice and bushy and filled in over here. But you can see since we're nice and clumped together, we're getting a little fungus and bacteria in there so we need to control that we have to cut a little bit of the foliage back in order to deter the fungus away we have a little cypress mulch down to prevent backsplash onto the leaves you want to try to water just the soil not the leaves and that'll help with uh, keeping bacteria and fungus back especially blight blight hits the garden here in florida like crazy every year so we're going to go and leave these bees to pollinate. We can see we have a lot of stuff growing underneath our awning here, which is starting to get big. My eggplant is looking so good over there. We have tomatoes starting to sprout and look good. We have our lavender here. We have our cantaloupe here. So that's why we want coleus. Coleus attracts so many bees. We have new seeds pollinating, I mean germinating right here. This is large red cherry tomatoes in like a seven gallon bucket. So we put a trellis on it and we're just going to single them out on each side, put a bamboo stick on each plant. And I'm going to keep like maybe two or three plants in there because they're indeterminate variety, cherry tomatoes. And that means they're going to grow really big until either blight, like a fungus infection kills them off or until uh, 
you know, they stop producing and just get killed off by the frost. They will produce for you basically until it kill, get kills off by a fungus infection or frost. We got peppers here looking really good since we put it under the shade cloth. We have a tomato looking really good. I planted some backups in there with it. Our rosemary started to sprout, which I'm really happy about because we couldn't get that to sprout. That's right there. We have lavender starting to come back, which I'm so happy about too, since we started utilizing this shade cloth. The containers aren't getting too hot. They're staying a little moist because it's keeping them ultraviolet harmful rays off of the leaves. We're not burning. They're still sucking up a lot of water because they're using a lot of that energy up from the sun, but you can see my eggplant is even doing a lot better right here. Take a look. She's flowering all over the place. So uh, we're getting a lot of good foliage. We haven't really gotten any fungus. I did pick two leaves off that were starting to get some fungus spots on them, but you can see we have nice flower growth, nice foliage growth. So we're good with the nutrients on her. We're feeding these. This one I'm feeding like once to twice a week right now. It really needs a lot of food. And then the other little babies, we're just giving a diluted strength halfway with the DynaGrow Grow nutrients. And then the coleus here, we're just going to keep on growing. Give it nutrients every couple of weeks. We're giving it a Protec silicone solution, which protects it from the heat. Because coleus can be grown in the summertime, especially here in Florida. It's one of the things I really like to grow because I know it's going to just take off during the summer. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I really hope this helps you to just stop your coleus from getting so woodsy on you. And you can even cut and propagate if you wanted to. You can cut any stem off of this and propagate it. Just let it root in some water and you'll have coleus in no time. Let me go grab that coleus I have that's rooting and I'll show you what to do. This is a coleus I rooted probably about three weeks ago now. It's just been growing on my windowsill inside. And look at the root system on it. We have three plants in here. And look at the size root system we have. So these are really nice healthy roots. We're going to separate them and just transplant them. Just remember to stick them in water right away as soon as you cut the branch off. Now the way I did this is just, you know, you could even take a little guy if you wanted to. Enjoy him in a vase for a while and just plant them outside when you're ready. Now when you do transplant these, you definitely want to make sure you transplant when it's nice and uh, cool outside. Like in the early, early morning, give it lots and lots of water as soon as you transplant it going to need consistent watering for the first couple of days you know for at least three days after you transplant any plant you should give it pretty good adequate water for the first three days keep that soil moist till it adjusts because especially when you're going from hydroponically growing in water to soil these water roots are going to eventually probably die off and then it's going to have to create soil roots and reroot itself into the ground so you might have a little acclimation period to where it stalls out for like a week or two but just give it some nutrients when you do transplant it give it lots of water for the first couple of days give it like you know i'd try maybe nutrients one time a week when they're this small and you'll have a nice good plant we transplanted this one the same way rooted it in some water first and we got nice flower growth growing on it once the flower stalk gets big we'll go ahead and cut it usually i should you know what let's trim this up because you know what she's really bushy on this side and this is a good example here you can see i trimmed this up i cut that top off and we grew two new branches so th those are the two new branches and we already have leaves popping out flowers popping out of it so we're going to trim down here make sure you have those two leaves that are growing out of the side first and they're pretty big and then you can go ahead and propagate this little guy if you really wanted to can go ahead and stick him in the ground because he has two side growths on those nodes right there and this will take off into another plant for you so we can actually go ahead take it inside root it watch them flowers keep them in the vase and we're going to transplant these either tonight when it gets really cool out this way the sun's not beating on it all day you definitely want to transplant early in the morning give it a few hours to adjust before that hot sun comes out or at night i feel that's the best time we have more seeds pollinating more coleus growing that we have to trim up back here. You can see they're doing really well now in the summer. We got some shade back here about two, three o'clock. We get a little bit of shade in this bed back here. Thank you so much for stopping by you guys. I really hope this helps you to grow coleus in the best way possible. We actually have some coleus growing in the backyard in a tote that we had from last year and it's looking really good. I'm so surprised that it's making it. Maybe I'll show you guys that in another video. But I really appreciate you stopping by and I hope this helps you in the best way possible. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm always here for you and I love what I do. See you guys next time out in the garden. Have a great day. Bye-bye.